what I would say to anybody that's aspiring to be a coin dealer, aspiring to get all the great deals, um, show up early. Um, what I would say is uh, when you when you do show up early, uh, you're going to beat many of the competition that aren't as driven, aren't as uh, motivated as you to uh, find the coins that are desirable. Wow, so crazy weekend uh, at the shows. Uh, we went to Cowtown and we went to Austin. Uh, both, both, like I said, were, were wonderful shows. Um, these two boxes we got from uh, Cowtown White Settlement. We're going to be showing you guys all these today. In the next video, we'll be showing you guys all of these coins from Austin. And uh, in the next video, we will be showing you guys our huge submission going out shortly. So... Uh, you guys are going to want to stay tuned for all these great videos. I'm going to give out great tips uh, that we learn from each show. And also give you an insight on particular grades that we see in this box. So uh, stay tuned guys and enjoy this video. Hey guys, just made up the light box. I wanted to ask you guys a quick question. Uh, for future videos, would you guys be interested in seeing the whole lot of coins that we find from a coin show? Or would you be interested in seeing just a few? Um, we actually found 29, I think we have 29 listings up from this coin show. Um, so it's a whole lot of coins and uh, I'd be honored to show you guys, uh, give you a perspective on, uh, on this coin show and what really helped me find this large group of coins. But uh, let's get started showing you guys these coins right now. So, um, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of backstory on how we got to this coin show and kind of the, the pre-coin uh, show kind of preparedness. So, what actually happened was, uh, I'm going to start showing off coins while we're doing this for you. But what, what had happened was, is that we showed up to the coin show uh, an hour beforehand. And what normally happens at a coin show, if you show up early... Um, Either they let you in exactly when early bird starts, or they let you in a half an hour to an hour early. And so, uh, we woke up at 3.30 in the morning, uh, we made our trek all the way uh, to Dallas in the White Settlement area, and we, uh, we, we got there and they said, hey, we're going to open up at 9, so uh, I don't know why you're, you're here, you know. And so I just stood there, stood in the lobby, waited, um, and at about 8.35, they let me in. And what I would say to anybody that's aspiring to be a coin dealer, aspiring to get all the great deals, um, show up early. Um, what I would say is uh, when, you're, when you do show up early, uh, you're going to beat many of the competition that aren't as driven, aren't as uh, motivated as you to uh, find the coins that are desirable. Um, and so when I, I know at the normal cow town, which they call this coin show, I, you know, I get maybe 10 maybe 15 coins but at this show I got 29 coins and what was pretty neat, decent about this coin show was that um, we uh, we didn't have actually any competition so I normally have a few guys that show up that do the same thing as me you know they send stuff back to their shop um, they have stuff that they sell on Instagram and Facebook and no one was there which was pretty awesome and so that, that really gave me a boost and helped me a lot um, this is a nice 1890s that we got from a guy named Sonny. Uh, he actually, every show, says, sit down with me, I'll show you all my coins, and we kind of battle it out. And, uh, and most of the time I find uh, nice coins, nice examples that I end up taking home from him. Uh, so a lot of these coins, you know, better dates. 1890s and 64 is a difficult date to find. Uh, when you get up to the Gem State area, 65 and up, they start to double and triple in price. So... Uh, 
a lot of sweet coins and we also got a few unique coins like this one this is an 1833 uh, Overton 105 uh, bust half dollar uh, I really like uh, the coin just because of its uh, its detail attention to detail um, yeah, you know and it has kind of a peripheral toning to it um, this was the Jules Re Rivera I think collection um, I think these were auctioned off in like 2003 2004 sometime in there when uh, this person passed away so that's a little bit you know of a little bit of a perk when buying coins like this uh, sometimes they have a nice pedigree um, and sometimes uh, that, that can actually add to the premium of the coin and the thing that's pretty unique about this coin is I don't see many uh, issues with it sometimes they become a little, they get a little cleaned or uh, they're over dipped gives them that clean look gives them that really uh, just not really nice appearance and uh, this coin really is just a nice original example um, so uh, I'm very happy about that coin I uh, don't get too many opportunities to you know find coins that are out of the ordinary so that one was a blessing um, this one's also a blessing too um, uh, the cool story about all these coins, which was the Overton one, and then this one, and a few others, is the coin dealer actually, which is which is very strange. He, I think he, you know, he might be a hoarder or someone that uh, has many boxes that he just puts stuff in, throws stuff in, and he's very disorganized. Um, but he's a really nice guy when you get to talk to him, and he prices stuff very reasonably. Um, so when I went to the coin show, he had like five or six of these boxes that were out. Um, and I just, I said, hey, good to see you. Shook his hand. And I said, hey, can I start looking through some boxes and find what I like? And he said, yes, sir, you can. So um, this coin popped out to me just because, I mean, look look at this originality to the coin. Um, the, the luster is very nice on the reverse. Um, you know, it's a quality example. There's nothing really distracting about it. Um, and it, I don't know, it really... I really like the coin just because it's an early date as well. Um, something I really love about it. But uh, the coin dealer that I met is really nice. Um, he, you know, constantly tries to help people find coins that they like, and uh, I'm so thankful for guys like that because it really helps me um, find coins for you guys and give you guys a great price as well. So uh, look out for this coin, GushuCollectibles.com. Might still be up there by the time you see this video. Um, you would love this in your collection. Hey guys, wanted to take a quick break in this video to thank all of our uh, loyal customers. We got a few orders going out tomorrow. Uh, Casey's sorting coins right now, but let me get, let you guys get back to the video. If you are interested in any coins uh, that we might be showing off, just uh, visit AcousticCollectibles.com. Up next, I wanted to show you another coin we got from that, that gentleman. This is a 1946 uh, Iowa commemorative half dollar. Um, I've been buying a lot of OGH commemorative half dollars just because it has that added bonus um, of the OGH appeal. And when they were really sending these coins in um, during the OGH days, uh, most of these are very original, untouched, um, or very vibrant, um, vibrant coins, just like this one. Um, and, you know, and look at the eye appeal on the coin. Um, there's nothing really distracting about it. Uh, it's 100% blast white. Um, Honestly, I don't even know. Maybe this coin could gold cack. Um, but if you could just see the detail in the coin, it's it's remarkable. The luster is remarkable as well. And most of the time back then, they didn't really have a kind of a grasp on on grading uh, commemoratives. So some a lot of these OGHs sometimes receive gold cacks, which is pretty interesting in itself. But um, we also ran into another commemorative which I really like. This is um, a 1935 Boone. Um, and the thing about this coin is it's 100% blast white. I think there's a little bit, a few dots on the reverse. But just look at this luster. It, it's I, I love the luster on this coin. I love the the eye appeal to it. Like I said, it has a little bit of those dings, not dings, but kind of uh, little spots there. Um, this was also a retreat from that gentleman as well. Uh, I mean, but just look at this coin. Uh, when you're trying to stack commemoratives or get your commemoratives in order, I mean, a coin like this. You can't go wrong with um, it has the highest eye appeal in terms of being, it being blast white, and it's a gem state coin um, from a wonderful uh, time period. So uh, coins like this, I, I always buy because I really love uh, the way they look. Um, 
and there's three different types of coins that you can all, always buy beautifully toned ugly toned or blast white try to find uh, you know try to find these two try not to get the ugly toned one because most of the time it will uh, you lose a lot of the premium on a coin but um, we also bought a bunch of annex coins from him uh, a lot of soap boxes got a soap box 1923 ms65 uh, it's got a little uh, you know, got a little uh, kind of residue on it. Uh, nothing too crazy about this coin. Has a little chip up here, which isn't too bad of a problem. Uh, got another 1917 from him. I actually like the other coin more, but uh, we paid about the same price for this MS60 coin. Uh, and I would think this coin is actually an AU. So we ended up paying, you know, around the same price as the other coin. Um, but. Uh, you know, they have their own individual things that stand out. This one has a little bit of a toning on it, so maybe someone might want this coin um, for their collection. And there's also a lot of soapbox guys that just love this little tight, uh, little tight uh, grading service that had uh, really cool holders like this. But um, show you guys a few more. This is 1878 uh, Morgan Dollar. Um, it's a seven tail feather. Starting to get a little bit of toning on the bottom of the rim here. Um, the luster is blinding, which is very nice. You know, you got blast white, ugly tone, beautifully toned. This one's blast white, so had to buy it. Um, he offered it to me for a good price, and it's something I can really help my customers out in finding. I think these coins are selling for $175, $180, um, and I ask around $155 for something like this. So, you know, if you can get well under retail for a lot of this stuff, um, you'll have no problem finding a new customer, a new owner for it. Um, and I think this one will be gone very soon. Up next, uh, high reliefs have been hot. Uh, it's cool to find one in a soapbox. This one is Unk Details. Um, coins like this right now are selling for you know around 300, 325, even more on eBay actually. Um, but the fees are pretty horrendous on there. Um, you know, this coin's uh, pretty nice, but when you kind of turn it, it, you can't really see it in real life, but someone harshly cleaned this coin, like used a brush and brushed it like this. Uh, I'm glad Annex picked up on that. Um, but still, you know, a coin that will move pretty quickly for you, especially in this time. Um, it's got a little toning on uh, the reverse, the bottom here, which is pretty cool. But a whole really, really nice uh, Annex soapbox group. Um, but let's keep showing you guys uh, some coins that you would love. Up uh, next, something I don't really buy often. This is a 1909S uh, Lincoln cent. Um, I think full retail is like 175 on the coin, but finding a you know a circulated uh, 1909S in a holder, uh, problem free, is pretty difficult. Um, and so I offered this one for full retail to somebody, a dealer, and they accepted. Um, I like the coin because it has. Uh, I don't even know what this is called. I need to find the phrase for it. Um, but uh, 1909S, tough date, what well, we've been kind of going back to, tough date mercs, tough date uh, pennies, stuff that you uh, can know and spot right away um, that'll have a high demand. That's something that something you might want to uh, focus on if you're you know, starting to become a dealer and uh, want to look out for your customer's best interests. Most of the time, they need some coins like this. Up next, uh, like I said, Mr. Sonny was giving us a great deal on a lot of coins. Uh, we have a lot of key dates that we bought. This is the 1898S in AU50. Uh, you know, a nice original coin, uh, not ugly toned. I would call this circulated blast white. Uh, nothing that's too distracting about it. Um, so that's something that you would uh, normally be interested in if you were uh, not trying to spend too much and break the bank. Uh, 95s, you can't go wrong with these better dates. Um, making a little bit more of a narrow margin on stuff like this. Um, I know most coin dealers aren't really talking about this stuff, but um, it's just something that can give you guys tangible information. Um, the coin more is a blast white uh, example. Um, and I had a few people that don't really like the raw stuff. They like more of that graded stuff, uh, even if it's in a lower grade like this coin. So. Uh, that's something that I've been focusing on as well. If I can get a cheap, uh, lower grade key date, I'll try to do that, you know. Um, so this coin fit the bill perfectly. This 1892S, graded VF30. Um, a 92S is a little bit more difficult. 92Ps are, are pretty common, uh, but the S is pretty difficult to find. 
Um, I actually had a 92S in AU50 that I passed on. Um, it was just too much for me, but I should have bought it because uh, they're just such rare coins to find. And uh, sometimes you have to pay up for stuff like that. Um, so whenever you're in front of somebody and, you know, they're offering you stuff, uh, you know, right below uh, auction records, sometimes you can get away with paying a little bit more because you have that rarity, you have that coin that nobody has right now. An IE2S, someone asked for because they needed it for their book. So once these get to the new owner, he's going to be cracking them um, and uh, putting them in his book. So that's something that I've been uh, focusing on. Um, if you guys ever need a coin for your book, need a coin for your collection, you know, list all your uh, dates that you might need below or the grades that you're looking for. And that's something that uh, I take a screenshot of. I reach out to you as soon as I find a coin you might like. I just run through lists and give people uh, exactly what they need. And so shout out to Sergio on Instagram. He made uh, a four coin purchase this weekend and that was one of the coins in 92S that he's gonna be enjoying for his collection. Um, this coin is 1879cc, uh, graded VF35, uh, cap die, top 100 uh, VAM3. Um, this coin has this kind of nice circulated uh, toning to it. Uh, people like that uh, more of original uh, feel to it. Uh, some of these coins have been dipped and have been tried, and a lot of chemicals have been on circulated coins, and some of them still pass. But something like this. Um, never really saw the light of day with all these chemicals that came out with, you know, in the 70s, 80s, 90s to try to quote unquote repair your coins. Um, this coin really uh, is an outstanding example and so fortunate enough to hold a coin like this. Up next, uh, we're going to be showing you guys a few more coins here. Um, uh, just a few more. I didn't want to shoot over overboard you with all this stuff. Uh, this is an 1879 O graded MS 64 uh, by uh, NGC. Um, you can see that blast white appeal to the coin. Um, and when we flip it over, it also has you know that that blast white feel as well. It's kind of a little bit grungy, uh, a little bit of uh, dark darkness in some of the fields here. Um, but overall, just a tough date to find in a higher grade. Um, when I saw this coin in the holder holder. I thought, man, I think this coin uh, is something that someone would love, um, and I had to jump on it. 79.0 is a tougher date, um, and I, you know, I always love handling coins like this. Another tough date that I've been finding is the 1903S. Uh, this one's graded G6. Uh, I found this coin because someone's going to need a hole filler for their collection, um, and most of the time, people can't afford an XF40. I think XF40s are selling for like 500 bucks right now. Uh, it's, you know, so even middle, uh, middle of the road circulated coins are selling for 500 bucks. And that's just something that isn't available for everybody. Um, people are all on different journeys for collecting. You know, some people want to, uh, uh, start filling their books with things that are a little bit more reasonable like this coin. Um, so stuff like this sells for, you know, 80 bucks, which is not too bad at all. Um, and you know, uh, we also got one more coin from Mr. Sonny. Uh, this is 1894S, uh, graded, uh, you know, AU53. It's got some kind of metallic-looking color to it. Um, I actually got another one at the Austin show that I'm going to show you guys in the next video. That one's a little bit more beautiful in terms of its example. Um, but a 94S right now has been has been pretty hard to find. 94Ps are even harder just because of the second lowest mintage. Uh, of the Morgan Dollar series at 110,000, um, but I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit, leave you guys with um, a perspective of uh, if you guys show up, if you guys put in the work, if you guys you know really want to become a coin dealer or something that you are passionate about. Uh, most of the time, which which most of us have learned through our parents and other people, show up early, um, introduce yourself, um, and be prepared to spend. Um, that's kind of what we've been trying to. Master, uh, we used to get to coin shows like right when it opens, and that's been a been a problem for us because when we got there when it opens, uh, they were pretty lenient on on letting people in, and then there was four or five guys already just pillaging, taking everything, um, and so that could be a little bit tough for you when you rely uh, once a week to grab all the coins you can for your income, um, and so that that's something that's unfortunate if you're not uh, you know trying to get better at showing up to coin shows earlier and uh, waiting in line, then that's 
that's going to be on you. And so we've been, we showed up to this coin show early and we were the only early bird for many hours, which was amazing. So a lot of the coin dealers came up to us and said, Hey Drew, uh, you know, we, we want to sell you some coins and, uh, could you come over to our booth when you can? We would love to pull some stuff out for you. So that's an amazing feeling. Um, and you know, as, as you start to progress during, uh, you know, your coin experience, getting more connections at the coin show, you'll start to learn that people will recognize you, people will come to you and say, hey, I got new stuff. Things will start to come together uh, like glue. And so uh, I hope you guys learned some stuff from this video. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, these lots. And uh, let's roll to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like. Uh, we spent a lot of time driving there, getting the coins uh, for our customers and then presenting them to you. So uh, if you guys want to subscribe, we're coming out with more coin content every week. And uh, we will see you in the next video.